Good morning. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the wonderful, mighty name of Jesus. The name is above every name. And Lord, we pray for our nation today. We speak peace to our country. We decree and declare it that our nation is a righteous nation, cleansed and covered by the blood of Jesus. That Jesus Christ is Lord over our nation. We give you all the praise and glory, Lord. And we pray for our leaders because you told us to, Lord. We thank you they hearken unto you in Jesus' name. That they make the right decisions for our country. We decree and declare our nation is a strong Christian nation. And we pray for all the nations of the world that every nation has a gospel preached as a witness. And then they should come. We thank you, Lord, for each and every evangelist, prophet, or pastor, evangelist, teacher, co-labor Lord out there preaching your gospel message. We thank you, Lord, they minister the word in season and out. They reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering. Thank you, Lord, that I want them to quit doing what God called them to do. You gave us apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to perfect the saints. We thank you every day the saints are being perfected, the lost are being reached, and more people are receiving Jesus every day than the day before. And Father God, I thank you, Lord, for anointing me today, that I'll be able to say and do what you have me say and do. Thank you, Lord, for giving me out of the Holy Ghost. And I, press, I thank you, Lord, as we press on into your word, we receive revelation knowledge from the word in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let's turn our Bibles here to 2 Corinthians. And we'll read here Paul's testimony as. In chapter 11 of 2 Corinthians, chapter 11, beginning verse, uh, we'll start verse 22 here. Paul says about other ministers and what he went through. Are they, upon, are they uh, Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, more abundance in stripes and, uh, and uh, above measure, in prisons more frequent on the deaths of, of the Jews. Five times I received thou forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and day I was in the deep. In journeys often, in perils of robbers, and peril, in perils of waters, and perils of robbers, perils of my own countrymen, and perils of heathen, and perils of the city, and perils of the wilderness, and perils of the sea, and perils among false brethren. In weakness, in painfulness, and watching off, and hunger, and thirst, and fastings off, and cold, and naked, besides those things which are without, those things upon me daily, the cares of the churches. Now let's read here in 2 Timothy. You know, theologians say this is the last letter he wrote. And here in 2 Timothy, the scripture says here in chapter 3, now verse 11, Paul said by the Holy Spirit, persecution and afflictions which came upon me at Iconia, uh, uh, Antioch and Iconia, at Lystra, which persecution I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Now let's go back over here and read here from, um, the scripture says here in Philippians chapter 3, we referred to this the other day a little bit, in Philippians chapter 3, now the scripture says here in verse 13 and 14, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark of the prize I call it of God in Christ Jesus. Let's go here to the gospel of Mark, please. We read about this dear lady the other day. In Mark chapter 5, remember the lady the issue of blood? Beginning in verse 25. And a certain woman who's had an issue of blood 12, uh, 12 years had suffered many things and many positions, but all she had was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, came the press by and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch his clothes, I should be whole. And straightway the fountain of blood was dried up, and she felt in her body she's healed the plague. Chapter 6. Now this is about Jesus' ministry in verse 1. And he went out, Jesus, went out from Thans, came to his own country, and disciples followed him. When the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach the synagogue. The many here were astonished, saying, What's out this man these things? What wisdom this has given him? This mighty works wrought by his hands. This is not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judah and Simon, are not his sisters here with us, and they were offended at him. And Jesus said, A prophet's not without honor, but his own country, among his own kin, his own house. And he could there do no mighty work, save he lay his hands on a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief, and what about the village's teaching? Now, the scriptures show here about the determination this woman had to have the issue of blood. Think about this. She went to all these physicians, apparently all that she could find or heard about, and she kept going from doctor to doctor to doctor, and one day she ran out of money. Then she heard of Jesus, and she said, if I can just touch his garment, I'll be made whole. And then we have Jesus come to his own hometown, and he could there do no mighty works because of what the people's attitude was and their unbelief. So what did Jesus do? Well, he didn't give up. 
He kept going around teaching. They're not listening to him. They're not believing him. And then you have the Apostle Paul, wherever he went, went through all this persecution. And in any of those instances, you could have chose to quit and not, and not go on and not pursue the Lord. But as believers, you know, the greater one dwells inside of us, the Bible says in 1 John 1, 9. Excuse me, 1 John 4, 4. Thank God for 1 John 1, 9. But 1 John 4, 4, greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. The greater one puts us over. And the Holy Spirit will always give us confidence and faith and assurance that we need to go on for God. So no matter what the Apostle Paul went through, and he's just as human as you and I are, he chose not to quit. You may face a situation that, about your job, your family, your ministry, whatever, and the temptation comes to, to give up believing God for your healing, quitting, not, you know, not going on, not pursuing the Lord. But you know, victory always comes as we stand our ground and just choose to be relentless with God's word. I think about old Roberts before his ministry really kicked off. He was a pastor. And so he decided he's going to read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the book of Acts five times in a month on his knees. And he did so. It's amazing that after that, his healing ministry kicked in. We have Brother Hagen. If you've heard ever heard his testimony, he's 16 years old, started out when he's 15, sick all of his life, and then through those years of him being 16, in his life, he read the New Testament through, the whole complete New Testament, over 150 times, and portions of it more than that. And he read books like F.F. F. Bosworth, Christ Healer. There was a hardback and more on five copies. The reason was is he never wanted to be sick again. He believed God to receive healing, and he never wanted to be sick again. So he took the time. Even though he had a, like a photographic memory, he still took the time to read God's Word and read healing scriptures every night. That's how bad he wanted to not only be healed, but to walk in divine health. Now, a lot of times people get criticized for their success, and many dear Christians are afraid of it, thinking maybe God does want a person to be successful. But God gave us principles of word how we could achieve success that Jesus bought, paid for, and freely gave to us. By knowing what's promised to us in Christ Jesus is the beginning, the revelation knowledge of God's word, that he wants to be prosperous. I don't know, as a kid growing up, you know, my last name being Rich, people would sometimes would make fun of me, neighbor people or kids you went to school with, calling you the poor little rich boy. But then one day I got born again, and somebody gave me a set of Brother Copeland's tapes, a, a six-tape series, and let me know I need to listen to them. It's called The Laws of Prosperity. So I borrowed these, these tapes that this guy at church gave them to me where I got saved at. And, and I listened to those tapes, and I wore out this whole set of those. And then I got another set and wore out that set. Now, there's six cassette tapes in it. They'd be like CDs today. You know, CDs are kind of easy to wear out. But anyway, and then I wore out the third set. And the fourth set, I still got it. Well, now, why did I listen to it? I was bombarding my mind with prosperity scriptures to believe God, that God actually meant what he said. He said, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. He's a soul prosper. And what that will do for you is it'll bombard your mind to get rid of the doubt and unbelief and everything you've been taught that was contrary to God's promises. It helps you stand through storms. You know, they tell the story about a chiropractor who'd graduated in college. And he wanted to, I think, when he set his practice up in Florida, we can all understand why. But anyway, so he went to this place for, you know, town, beautiful town, where he wanted to set up his practice. It was either California or Florida. But anyway... He went into this town, and he checked with the chiropractic association in that town and let them know, you know, I'd like to start a practice here. And they said, oh, this is the last place we're going to start a practice. We, we have more car, car practice, but then we have people. You know, it's like one chiropractor before, uh, to, to eight people. Well, he just had this strong desire in his heart to do this. And he didn't let that, you know, make his decision. He, he thought about it for a while. And so he decided, I'm going to go house to house. So in that in that city, that town, he went to over 12,500 houses knocking on doors, and he got, he talked to over six, I'm rounding off the numbers, he talked to over 6,500 people and asked them what they thought about him starting to practice here and asked them some other questions. He got over 4,000 people's names that when he does open up and has open house, would you mind I send you a notice to let you know what I'd like for you to come? 
The first month of his practice, he, he netted over $72,000. In one year, he grossed over a million dollars. What was this determination? Not to give up on what he had in his heart. You know, Jesus said, Therefore I say to you, what things are bizarre when you pray? Believe, receive them, and you shall have them. And that desire that you have in your heart is from God. He gives you those desires. And he gives you the ability through Jesus Christ to do these things. I mean, think about all that the Apostle Paul went through, and he didn't quit. He didn't give up. I think about Rex Humbar. He was like one of the first preachers to be on national-wide, uh, national uh, what do you call it, radio. And so he went to this radio center. This is back when radio was live. It'd be like Facebook Live today, you know. This is back when radio was live. So when you started, that light went on, that red light, you, you got to start talking. Well, he, you know, he has his wife and family, kids, they sang also gospel songs. So he goes out to the radio station and just knows this is, you know, this is God, and I'm going to go down there and go on the radio. And they went there, and they ran him off. And so he ran over and went down there over 13 times. I already tell this story, Brother Higgs can't be. Went down to the radio station over 13 times. You know, he'd think, I'm not going to go down there again. They ran me off last time, but it kept coming to start. Go again. Go down there again. And each time, they ran him off. So he's washing his car, if I remember correctly. And it comes to his, go to the radio station and go now. Well, he didn't want to do this. He's been there all this time. But they want him to take him a long time ago. And again, this is live radio. So he goes out to the radio station and asks the person again, I'd like to do a radio program, a religious program, you know, preach the gospel, pray for the sick, or whatever he did. And the guy says, you got your guitar? Because he knew he sang. And Rex had already told him all about that. He says, it's in the car. He says, go get it. When the light goes on, you go on. And he was really the first preacher that really got to be on gospel radio across the country. Now, there have been ministers in their hometown, but he really put it on the map. God used him. Oh, Roberts was the minister that God used to put on television. I think it was NBC or CBS, and he said he wouldn't be on it. I oh, know we're not going to do that. But he raised enough money for them to bring the cameras to his tent. And they said, well, we'll put you on, but you have to have a judge sign off the affidavits. These people actually got healed. Tuberculosis and polio was popular then. And so on that platform, there'd be a judge sitting there. And so when someone got healed, if to be able to have this testament on television, he'd have to, they'd have to sign off on this and notify, uh, notarize it. And I really got Benny Hinn's attention. He didn't realize Oral Roberts went all through that. You know, Norman Vincent Peale wrote this book about, you know, positive thinking. I mean, everybody in the world probably heard about Norman Vincent Peale one time or another, you know. He was like the first positive thinking guru there was. But he pastored a church in New York City. I kind of like that. And one of the people who went to his church was President Donald Trump, his daughter. Often, you know, sometimes I thought about when it came time to receive an offering, you'd have to think about wonder what this billionaire is going to put in the offering. <laughs> you know, pastors kind of think that way. But anyway, so uh, he wrote this book about positive thinking and threw away this transcripts in the trash. His wife went and dug it out. Him and his wife were, had been married by the time uh, you know, he or her went to the home of the Lord. had been married over 63 years. But she went and dug it out. And she got it published and it went all over the world. And she had a little bit more self-confidence than her husband did. And sometimes your wife will. Or sometimes your husband will. Or your pastor or whoever. They'll kind of flame, fan the flames that's inside of you. You know, God doesn't want you to quit. You know, he wants you to go on and and keep on standing and fighting a good fight of faith and doing what Jesus told us to do. We can do all things through Christ who strengthen us. I think about Oprah Winfrey, you know, she got fired from her first television anchor job. Well, she can't do anything. But, you know, she owns her own channel today and done quite well. And Seinfeld was booed off the stage at his first comedy performance. They said he didn't, he didn't make people laugh and wasn't funny. So you see people many times went through things. That in a natural, you know, it looked like quitting. It looked like it's time to give up. Can't go on. Think of that chiropractor who quit. But think of all the benefits he was to people by him enduring and going on and taking all the persecution. Though Jesus faced this persecution in his own hometown, he didn't give up the ministry. He didn't quit. He went on for God. And the Apostle Paul was just as human as I, I am and you are. But he went on for God and, and regret some of the things he went through. But he kept on preaching the gospel. You see, there will always be a reason to quit and give up and not go on. But nevertheless, you know, God will want you to go on. He wants you to keep on standing and fighting the good fight of faith because he told us to. 
Stan, having done all Stan. Think about the woman of issue of blood. All those doctors she'd been through. But that didn't change her. To her, it was always next. She went to one doctor, came out with a bad report. Next. And she went to another doctor. She went to another doctor, came out with a bad report. And she came out with next. She just kept going to the next doctor. Run out of money. Maybe run out of doctors. But she ran across someone that knew Jesus. That told her about Jesus. That he had a healing ministry. All you can do is touch him. And she pressed through the crowd to get her miracle. You see, the Apostle Paul, we read there in Philippians chapter 3, he pressed on towards the mark of the high calling. There always be an opportunity to quit and give up. The word of God says, by his stripes you're healed. God doesn't want you to give up on that. The Bible says, my God, supply all your needs. He doesn't want you to give up on that. God says he wants to be prosperous. That's why I took those laws of prosperity tapes and kept bombarding my mind with them. Boy, I tell you, people hated those tapes. Oh, man. I'd be staying at people's homes and play that in the bedroom at night when I'm going to, trying to go to sleep or go, before I went to sleep, push play on a cassette tape player. Or, but, you know, he may have it turned down low. Sometimes Brother Colton would get loud. Not as loud as normal, but he'd get kind of loud. And, you know, people kind of hear that. And, boy, I, ta I take them to work. You know, there's guys at work. They got me in trouble. They got Mr. Clark to come and talk to me about that cassette. He owned the company. And, boy, some people at church hated those tapes. <laughs> and they, you know, didn't think the whole highly Brother Copeland. But what was I doing? I'm not trying to get people aggravated here. I got to get the word in me. And when it was my time at my break or wherever I was at, I could take the time and listen to those tapes. It's not like I'm trying to cram that down their throat. I'm probably going to do that later. But nevertheless, you kept on going and on. See, I need to hear what's on these tapes. And I need to get this message inside my mind. To get rid of this poor little rich boy message that God wants me to prosper and have good health. In the name of Jesus. And there'll be many times that these discouragements will come to you. But what you're going to do is not be moved by your emotions, by your feelings. They're lies anyway. So you just look for the truth inside this problem. There's a miracle inside this situation. I mean, the children of Israel, they're facing the Red Sea. They don't realize God's got a road underneath this water. and He's going to part the sea. You see, we have to realize we have all these testimonies of the Bible to encourage us to go on for God. We have this basketball player who was in high school, and he got cut from the high school team by the coach. His name was Michael Jordan. And you think about what he did. He went on to win six championships. And also got five MVP, MVP players awards for what he did. Most valuable player. Think of it, he gave up on a coach cutting. But you know, he said one time, he said, you know, you know, I've lost over 9,000 games. Or not, excuse me, 9,000 shots. And lost almost 300 games. And 26 times in my career, they gave me the okay, the go-ahead to shoot the the clock shot, and I missed him. And all those failures, I wrote down something he said. I like this one time and I heard it. I, Michael Jordan, I have failed over and over and over, three overs, again in my life. And that's why I succeeded. You see, if Paul would have given up, he'd have never been the Apostle Paul that we know about. If Jesus had given up, you know, right what the devil wanted him to do. See, you don't know what's ahead if you don't give up. All you see is what's going on right now. It was Dyson, is that how you pronounce the vacuum sweeper? He worked on there for 15 years, a bankless vacuum, and had over 5,100, well, 5,126 failures before he came up with this vacuum sweeper that netted him, grossed it, four million, five, four and a half million dollars. See, he could have gave up, he could have quit, Thinking it's not worth it, but he kept on fighting for it because he believed in it. Well, you and I are believers. We, we're called believers. We believe in God's promises. So we have to just constantly, no matter how it looks or how it feels, is keep on encouraging yourself to stand on those promises, to keep on facing what we're faced with the Word of God in the name of Jesus and speak to those situations, no matter what. I mean, Elvis Presley got his first chance to be on the Grand Ole Opera, and they fired him from his contract he had. But he didn't. He went on to do what he believed he was supposed to do. You see, I don't know where some of these people stood with Jesus or stand with Jesus, but I'll tell you one thing. Principles of faith work regardless of who you are. And sometimes the world's outdone the church and going on and enduring hardness as a good soldier, as we're told in the body of Christ and the Word of God. So when things aren't going your way, keep on standing on God's Word. 
and keep on speaking God's word and saying what God's word says about you and not give up and not quit. Take scriptures and carry them with you. I wrote scriptures on index cards and I just carry them with me as I go to work in my shirt pocket. And then when I get someplace, I'd go back and I'd read those cards to myself, remind me, my God supplies all of my needs according to his rich glory of Christ Jesus. The scripture says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthen me. I got this plaque I like, I keep on my desk. I have scriptures also. But I want to share it with you today. It's entitled here, Don't Quit. When things go wrong, as sometimes they will, when the road you're struggling seems all uphill, when the funds are low and the debts are high, you, may, you want to smile when you feel like to sigh. When the cares are press, pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't ever quit. Success is failure turn inside out, the silver tint of clouds of doubt. You never can tell how close you are. You may be near when it seems so far. So stick to the fight when your heart is hit. And when things go wrong, you mustn't quit. That's the example Jesus set for us, that he didn't quit even though his hometown didn't receive him. He went on for God, and thank God he did, and bought our salvation and finished the works of, of Calvary for us. He finished our salvation, so we don't have to be good enough to get it. All we have to do is just simply receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And so we have people in the Word of God and people that we know that have a testimony they went on for God. Like one person said, no test, no testimony. Our faith is going to get tried, but we always look to Jesus and keep our eyes upon his promises. Remind ourselves, this is what God's word says about me, that I can do all things through Christ's strength. This is what God said about me. And you know, we need to make those positive affirmations about ourselves that we are what God says we are. When you think about yourself, what do you think? When you talk to yourself, what do you say? Well, we should always, believers, we should always speak God's word and speak God's promises and say, by his stripes I'm healed. That Jesus himself took my infirmities and bare my sicknesses. That my God supplies all of my needs. I have the mind of Christ. The greater one indwells me. And by talking to ourselves, remind ourselves and praising God and being grateful and being thankful for what we have. By thanking God and praising God that this is what we have. It's amazing that you take the good news to people and they want to reject it. They think there's a catch in here. But there's no catch. There's no fine print. It's all the same size print. God has told us exactly what he wants us to have. If God didn't want us rich, he never put our poverty upon Jesus. He never made us an heir of Abraham's blessing. He could just gave us a new birth and that would have been it. And as important as a new birth is, and what's more important, nothing, than receive Jesus. But when you receive Jesus, you receive all the Father has. And what we want to do with God's word is renew our mind to God's word. Think in line with God's word when something comes up. That we're not going to quit. We're not going to give up. We're not going to give in. So when bad news comes or people try to, like the world says, rain on your parade or take your vision away from you, no, write, write what you're believing God down. Write it down so you have it, so you go back to it and say, no, I've already prayed about this. I've already given the faith decree. I've already decreed and declared what God's word says about me. And I released my faith. And I believe, or my wife and I, whoever, we agreed. We prayed the prayer of agreement. And Jesus said, again, I've seen if two of you shall agree on earth as touch anything they shall ask, it shall be done for them and follow whichever. That's how positive Jesus was about this. That God wants us to have all that he has. One way we can receive it is, is uh, claim it. Another way we can receive it is by just praying the prayer of faith and believe we received it. But see, we don't want to whine and complain and look, come up with some kind of excuse why we don't have it. No, there's always be a, in the natural be something there facing you. They're trying to tell you, now if God wanted you to have it, he'd, let you, he'd already given it to you. Well, we didn't get saved that way. We had to call upon the Lord. We had to receive Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. And we did. Now we have to walk in those promises and believe God. God has something that he wants you to do in life. Maybe you're doing it. But he'll put something in your heart about what he wants you to do. And he'll want you to be faithful to that. And you know, when you know you're supposed to do something for God, it may not seem like a big deal. But you want to make it a big deal. Because this is something the Lord's dealt with you about. It may be going to your church. I don't know what it is, but we, we keep doing the word. But God will put something in your heart, and he wants you to fulfill that. And no matter what people think and how they criticize you, you have to go on with what you have in your heart and not let anybody take that away from you. There's a reason why each person's here on this earth. They're here to fulfill a purpose. I can't do what someone else could do, but I'm not supposed to. I'm supposed to do what I'm supposed to do. 
and be faithful to God. Sure, we make mistakes. Sure, we get discouraged. It comes to all of us, but we don't camp out there. We cast those thoughts down and realize this is the enemy just trying to harass me. He's been defeated. He's been brought to naught. He didn't, God didn't bring us this far for our country to fail. You know, you don't want to listen to the prophets of doom. Go by what the Word of God says. Decree and declare what God's Word says about your nation. And stand the gap for it. Our, your, your nation, our nation needs us to speak to it. It needs us to use our authority. And we take authority in Jesus' name over these situations that rise. We just don't give them a pass to let the devil do whatever he wants to do. No, we stand up against him. We're always proactive with our covenant that God gave us. We always are using the name of Jesus. And we speak to these situations and problems. So maybe you have went through some hard times. I mean, who hasn't? But what you want to encourage is something the Lord and, and press towards. Not look at those things behind. Just use them as a learning experience. You know, at least to find out something that didn't work. Brother Hagin would do something and say, well, at least I found out what I'm not supposed to do. Prove all things. Hold fast that was good. Prove things out. Step out of the boat. I mean, think about Peter. He always gets criticized because he's sank. But none of us, you know, at least I haven't walked on water. You know? And plus, you know, you get to heaven, you don't, you've got to face Peter now. What's he going to say to you about complaining about him sinking? Now? But anyway, so he stepped out. And you know, you've got to give it to somebody when they step out. I always like the idea, I like to watch the quarterback, no matter what team it is, takes the, t tosses the ball in an impossible situation. So it gets intercepted. So something happens. They tried. You know, that's what we do as believers. We keep on stepping out on God's word. The enemy, your thought life will bring up your failures, but you can laugh at those knowing that the greater one dwells in you and live your life a vo a vo a void of depression and live in joy and victory. See, joy and victory and prosperity and divine, they're choices. Just like receiving Jesus, that's a choice that we have to make. God won't make us make it the choice. He'll lead us to it, show us what the word says. To give us somebody to tell us what the promise is. But you and I have to make that individual decision, what we're going to do with the promise that we heard. Some people make fun of them. And they're born again people. Some people laugh about them. Like people didn't like my cassette tapes I had. I wasn't doing this to irritate them. I just need to get this inside of me. And I wasn't going to let anything stop me from listening to my cassette tapes. Now they're CDs and their iPods and everything else. But it started out that way for me. I don't know where you started. But I need to hear this all the time. So, man, or I'm, you know, going to bed at night or getting my morning shaving. That is, some preacher's preaching to me. Scriptures are being read to me to remind me who I am in Christ Jesus and what belongs to me in Jesus' name. I would encourage you, don't quit. Stand your ground on God's word. What God put in your heart, stay with it. And definitely what he put in the word, you want to believe it. Father God, I pray for my dear friend today that's listening. I thank the Lord for meeting all their needs in Jesus' name. I decree and declare they're healed, they're prosperous, they're blessed. And they're joyful and got the victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if you like us on Facebook, you know, give us uh, a heart, so a thumbs up, or po post something there. The more people that do that, the more people we can reach, they tell me. So I want to encourage you to do so. And go to our website at jessrichministries.com. If you've got a prayer request, you can use that. If you're making a donation, you can use that. You just check out the website. It's always getting updated. And thank God the new material is going to be there someday. But nevertheless, keep praying for us. And you can go to YouTube and check out our messages there. And, you know, stand with us and pray for us every day. And share the word with someone else. I want to encourage you to have a great day today. Keep speaking God's word. Till next time, this is Pastor Jess Rich. Mind you, stay confident. Remember that Jesus is always more than enough.